Here are some Easter eggs you might have missed in Deadpool and Wolverine. Fuck it, Fox. I'm going to Disneyland. This gonna get good. Deadpool has never shied away from commenting on Wolverine. He opened Deadpool 2 by directly going after the critical success of 2017's Logan. With Logan being a gritty finale for the superhero, Deadpool aimed to do the same with the sequel. For the third film, however, Deadpool refuses to let Logan's story end. I gotta be honest, I've always wanted to ride with you, Logan. He returns to the exact spot where Logan ended, with Wolverine being buried in the woods. When Deadpool digs up the grave, however, he discovers nothing but Logan's adamantium skeleton. While this skeleton does make for a useful weapon against the TVA, it's not exactly the best ally for Deadpool's new movie. Uh, what exactly brings you here today? I need to be an Avenger. Deadpool tries to find his place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. By hopping over to the MCU world, he tries to get a job as an Avenger. Instead of meeting with any of the actual superheroes, his Avengers interview is hosted by Happy Hogan. Happy Hogan is not an Avenger, but a very familiar character in the MCU. He's been Tony Stark's right-hand man since the first Iron Man movie. Despite all the attacks he's endured, Harry keeps chugging through the MCU. He's played a role in all three Iron Man movies, as well as all three Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Having dealt with superheroes, young and old, happy knows his heroes. He can tell that Wade wouldn't be the best fit for Disney's established universe. The Avengers don't do the job because they need it. They do the job because people need them. Okay, maybe you haven't watched all the Marvel movies and only the Deadpool movies. There's still plenty of Easter eggs to catch. Specifically, there's the birthday party for Wade. A lot of familiar faces show up for this scene. The standout is, of course, Colossus. The titanium member of the X-Men became Wade's reluctant ally in the previous two Deadpool movies. Vanessa, Wade's former fiance, is also present, revealing how the relationship didn't exactly work out. Wade's roommate, Blind Al, is still there, giving her scathing criticisms amid her blindness. Negasonic Teenage Warhead is back, as well as her love interest, Yuki, from the previous film. Even the smaller characters are back. Dopinder was the taxi driver of the first two Deadpool movies and is still hanging around. I will bathe in the blood of your enemies. But the one character who returns with the most support is Peter from Deadpool 2. He was cast as the ordinary man in Deadpool's makeshift X-Force. After enduring a brutal death in Deadpool 2, Wade saves him with Cable's time-traveling device. Peter Peter returns the favor by giving Wade a job as a car salesman. He also becomes a bigger hero in this film for just being a good guy. Not all heroes wear capes, some wear mustaches. Speaking of Cable's time-traveling device, Wade attracts the attention of the TVA. The organization first appeared in the Loki TV series. If you miss that show, don't worry. You won't need to peer closely at traces of Loki. It's more of a bonus than a necessity. All you need to know is they're a group that maintains various Marvel timelines. They protect timelines from anomalies that collapse due to some paradox. Wade, of course, is a walking paradox with how he constantly breaks the fourth wall. He even disrupts some TVA exposition to confess his love for Disney's MCU. It's fitting that Ryan Reynolds brings up Disney and Fox during his first visit to the TVA. With Disney buying Fox, all of Fox's Marvel properties will have to merge into the MCU. This means that Deadpool will either have to be revised for the MCU or remain in his own universe. The TVA is unique, not just because it's a reference to Loki. It's a great representation of Deadpool's placement amid this corporate synergy. Thankfully, he still remains his old R-rated self for his first film under Disney. While inside the TVA, Wade witnesses clips from different timelines. Is that Thor? Is he crying? In one of them, he interacts with Thor. This isn't so much a tease as it is a revision. The footage of Thor holding a dying Deadpool is actually from Thor The Dark World. The clip has been edited so that Chris Hemsworth is holding Wade instead of Loki. So while it might have been cool to see Deadpool banter it up with Thor, this is one alternate timeline we'll never see. That said, nothing is off limits in the multiverse. Part of Deadpool's plan to revive his timeline is to get a new Wolverine. This involves him jumping to different timelines to find the right version of Logan for an ally. Doing so, however, leads him to discovering many different versions of Wolverine. Here is where Marvel Comics fans will get their fill of references. First encounter is a comic accurate 5 foot 3 Wolverine. Comic accurate short king. Such a cute widow, Wolvie. The next wearing black is the Weapon X from the Age of Apocalypse. Logan with an eye patch is, well, patch. 
The older Logan in the hat is either Old Man Logan or Old West Logan. Take your pick of the old Wolverines. The crucified Logan is from Uncanny X-Men 251, the brown suit Wolverine from old X-Men arcade games. But the best alternate Wolverine was safe for last. Well, next to last. You know, from behind, you look a little bit like Henry. Oh my fuck! The biggest surprise of this Wolverine montage, Henry Cavill. This is a bit of a shock considering Cavill was previously known for playing Superman. He played the Man of Steel and, well, Man of Steel. Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Justice League. But with the DC comic universe receiving a makeover, Cavill is being replaced. So it's the perfect time for him to pop up in a Deadpool movie. Wade even goes so far as to highlight how Cavill will be treated much better in Marvel's we world. Treat you so much better than those shit fucks down the street. Welcome to the MCU, by the way. You're joining at a bit of a low point. Wade ultimately teams up with what is considered the worst Wolverine, reprised by Hugh Jackman. Although the film already mentioned a comic accurate Logan during the multiverse montage, there's faithfulness in Jackman's primary role. He plays a Wolverine who dons a yellow suit with blue highlights. This outfit has been one of Logan's more common costumes in the comics. It was also the outfit he primarily wore on X-Men, the animated series. This Deadpool movie marks the first time that Wolverine has worn this faithful costume. Famously, Jackman's X-Men movies steer him away from this depiction. In the earliest X-Men movies, the superhero team wore black leather. They even made a joke about wearing yellow spandex, but now the yellow spandex is back. Holy shit! You save the good stuff for special occasions? Killing mostly. The same year that Deadpool and Wolverine were released, Marvel Studios also released a new season of X-Men, the animated series. In the script, there's an inverse joke about how it would be much sillier if the X-Men did wear black leather. Am I going to war or a circus? Just goes to show that comic accurate fashion is preferable over boring black leather any day. Where the hell are we? I don't know. When Wade and Logan are sent to the void, they land in a desert wasteland. Well, that's not entirely accurate. There are still some relics of disposed timelines. One of the most notable is the giant Fox logo in the background. This is a real relic after Disney acquired Fox. Following the acquisition, the studio changed its title from 20th Century Fox to 20th Century Studios. There are still movies made under Fox with the same fanfare. The same logo, however, is not present. This goes for Fox Searchlight as well, having changed to Searchlight Pictures. While the studio and its properties still remain, the Fox logo itself is dead. Rest in pieces, Fox. Ah. <sighs> With Thor being teased at the TVA, there's anticipation for a cameo. Deadpool receives a big one after entering the void. He meets Chris Evans and believes this is Captain America. After all, it's the actor's most notable superhero role. Well, okay, second most notable. When Evans uses his powers, he's revealed to be Johnny Storm of the Fantastic Four. It's a reference to his performance in 2005's and 2007's Fantastic Four. It's been a long time since he's been in such a role. Most Marvel movie watchers probably forgot about that after Evans made his mark as Captain America in 2011. It makes sense for Evans to be in this role. After all, the void is where all the discarded timeline characters have gone. He's apparently got a mouth on him as well. She can lick my goddamn cinnamon ring clean and kick rocks all the way to ball. When Wade, Logan, and Johnny are captured, they're taken to a stronghold. This base is made out of the corpse of Ant-Man in his giant state. It's one of the grimmer uses of an MCU character in this film. What's more hilarious is Wade's comment on this site. Huh. All Rudd finally aged. Rudd is over 50 and barely looks his age. It's a meta ask that Reynolds couldn't help but point out. The villain that Deadpool encounters is Cassandra Nova, the twin sister of Charles Xavier. She hasn't been present in the X-Men movies, but in the X-Men comics. Her first appearance was in New X-Men number 114. Like Charles, she also inherited his powers of mind manipulation, making her a dangerous villain. Non-binary actor Emma Corrin made sure they evoked the same presence as Charles Xavier. Emma drew from the previous performances of Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy. Their performance pays great tribute to Xavier beyond looking bald although Emma wears that cap well. Deadpool encounters other variants of himself in the void. The cutest one worth noting is Dogpool, a dog version of the anti-hero. Believe it or not, this is a real character from the comics. He first appeared in Prelude to Deadpool, core number three, and is a part of Earth 103173. The dog was subjected to medical experiments, thus giving him the Deadpool powers. It's very fitting that Dogpool was played by Peggy the Pugs, referred to as the ugliest dog in Britain. His absurd face perfectly mimics Wade's burnt up complexion. It's easy to see why Dogpool ended up in the Deadpool core, but we're getting ahead of ourselves.
To take down Cassandra and find a way back home, Deadpool is going to need some help. He finds some extra superheroes to work with him and Wolverine. There's a story behind each one of these Marvel heroes plucked from Fox's vault. The first reveal, Elektra was the sidekick of Daredevil. She's reprised by Jennifer Garner, having previously played the characters in 2003's Daredevil and the 2005 spin-off Elektra. The next reveal is Gambit of the X-Men, played by Channing Tatum. Tatum had not played Gambit previously, but he was meant to. His name was attached to a Gambit movie that was never completed at Fox. The Void seems to hold not only old Fox Marvel characters, but also cancelled Marvel projects. The third reveal, however, is one of Fox's more successful solo Marvel heroes. Some motherfucker's still trying to ice skate up here. Wesley Snipes reprises his role as Blade, the vampire hunting half-breed. He played the character for three movies from 1998 to 2004. His appearance is worth noting as being one of the longest running actors to play a Marvel character. Finally, there's X-23, aka Laura, the youngest Marvel hero on the block. Daphne Keene reprises her role from 2017's Logan as the kid with Wolverine's powers. She also gets to reconnect with Logan in a rather moving moment between them. The most unique aspect about these characters cameoing is that this may not be the last we see of them. Consider how Marvel's Blade reboot has stalled for years. Within Deadpool and Wolverine, Blade is referred to as the one and only. There's only been one Blade. There's only ever gonna be one Blade. Later, when Wade speaks with the TVA about restoring timelines, preservation remains up in the air. In other words, there's a chance that Snipes could reprise Blade and that Tannen will finally get that Gambit movie. It all depends on what Marvel Studios decides to do next. When trying to stop Cassandra, Deadpool and Wolverine run into several variants of Deadpool. Most of these iterations are based on the Deadpool core from the comics. They're even played by some surprising actors. Most notable is the gender-swapped Ladypool voiced by Blake Lively, the wife of Ryan Reynolds. And yes, Reynolds does make a sly comment about this. Reynolds' kids are also thrown into the mix as they play Kid Pool and Baby Poo. When I want your opinion, I'll take Wolverine's that's Kidpool. She's the dirtiest. The weird disembodied skull head is Headpool, voiced by Nathan Fillion, a man who is no stranger to comic book roles, from Zenpool to Deadpool 2099 to Harold Pool. There are simply too many Deadpools to count in the big showdown scene. One clever addition to the Deadpool core is the greatest showman, Deadpool. This is yet another reference taking a dig at Hugh Jackman. He starred as P.T. Barnum in the musical The Greatest Showman. It's a great gag and a better reference than Wade's variant, just stating Ryan Reynolds' film directly to the camera. Showing up late to the party is Hunter B-15, reprised by Wunmi Masaku. She was previously a soldier in the TVA, but has assumed a higher role since. Her progression from Loki has made her a greater authority over timelines. So while the decision of whether or not to preserve the Fox Marvel timelines is up to Marvel Studios, the in-universe decision seems to be more in her hands. There are some Deadpool and Wolverine Easter eggs you might have missed. Which one is your favorite? Did we miss any? Let us know in the comments below.